Today on 10 Minute IT Jams, we have Jonathan Andresen, who is the Senior Director of Marketing for BitGlass, um, back for his third IT Jam with us. Um, so welcome back to the Jam, Jonathan. Thank you. Thanks for having me. No worries. So we'll be talking a lot about the relationship between cybersecurity and digital transformation today. So my first question for you is, does security help or hinder digital transformation? Very good question. As you know, digital transformation is such a big mega trend that's been going on for, for quite a few years. I think last year, over a trillion dollars was spent on digital transformation globally. Um, and it's interesting because security can very much slow digital transformation. And security teams can be the department of no in terms of choosing new technologies to turn, um, to turn data into digital data and workflows that perhaps weren't even digital into digital workflows. And so it's so much better for the business to move to, let's say, cloud applications or mobile use cases. Um, but it is a whole bunch of, it's a whole different workflow and, and really changes the data and who can access the data and how they use it. Um, and so it's, it's worrisome from a data security perspective, but if it's not implemented properly, um, security can, can actually slow down digital transformation. And, and in some ways I've seen organizations try to you know, make things very secure. And obviously you can make it very secure by turning off the internet or, or disconnecting, but we don't wanna do that. We wanna have, um, we wanna make sure that you know, technology is connecting people to where they need to, to do it. But what you end up having in some cases, if you make the processes so um, difficult and slow for the user, they just go around some of those security tools. And you can actually create issues of shadow IT that you didn't have before. And so it's very important when you think about digital transformation to implement security that is transparent to the user. And so if they've bought an iPhone, if they're using cloud applications, they use them in the way they're meant to be used without a security interface between them, without a clunky VPN, for example, to dial into. Um, and that's sort of the best way to approach security today with digital transformations to think about security as that layer across your, between your, you know, your users and your data that sits between your users and your cloud services um, and secures that data, who, who can access it, how they access it, what applications they're using, what devices they're using, um, so that you make sure the data is secure. Right, yeah. Um, and in light of what you just said, what, what specific types of security should organizations look at to support their digital transformation? Yeah, exactly. So, you know, digital transformation is really, in my mind, made up of, of several areas that are really important. So we've got cloud services, which gives us the ability to spin up infinite data. And, and then we have the ability to use mobility, uh, which is to access that data uh, anywhere we want. And you combine that unlimited data with unlimited access, and you can really turn things that weren't digital into digital transformation. And so it's important to sort of secure those two those two, uh, those two pillars of digital transformation. So mobility and your endpoints or your laptops, which are mobile operating systems now, and important to secure those. And also, you know, where's your cloud, where's your data? And in the cloud world, your data is in other people's data centers. And if you're running multiple cloud services, your data is in multiple data centers. And so, you know, as long as those service providers have the right security, there's nothing to worry about. But we've seen with recent attacks, uh, that that's not always the case. And cloud service providers, much like renting a car, you know, they can secure it as much as they, they can, but they're not, they're not responsible for how you use that cloud service. And so we need a layer of security that, um, that basically secures the user and how they use those cloud services on those mobile devices. And Secure Access Service Edge is one of the newest technologies to do that. Um, it brings together cloud security, like your CASB technology, with your traditional security tools, like your firewalls, your VPN access, your secure web gateways, and basically unifies them into a single cloud service that's unified across your organization. It gives you a single place to view your data and how people are using it, and sort of marries those disparate security technologies, which attackers take advantage of, those loopholes to, to get your credentials. We can unify that in a single a single instance called Secure Access Service Edge, and that really is why a lot of vendors are talking about it, uh, because it is such a, a huge shift, if you will, and such a great value to, to unify those technologies together, provide the same functionality, but do it not just across your 
you know, on-premise applications, but do it for your cloud service applications as well. Right, yeah. Um, and in terms of uh, security teams, what can they be doing differently uh, to make their digital transformation more successful? There's really three areas I would suggest looking at in light of the recent attacks that are happening and to make sure you sort of harden your security uh, posture against the, these type of issues. Um, the first is to protect your cloud services. I mean, that's a, that's a given. And, you know, cloud access security brokers are the de facto standard, like the firewall for the, for the cloud, basically, as Gartner would define it. Um, and it's important if you choose that technology to choose a cloud access security broker, a CASB technology that is multi-mode, that allows you to scale with your cloud applications. So it has forward proxy architecture, has reverse proxy architecture, and API integrations. So it covers all your cloud services. And, and basically with a broad feature set that includes AWS, your IS applications, your business applications, your shadow IT. There's a, there are some technologies that do that. You want to, there's a few of them that can bring these together. Um, when you do look at cloud security, it's important to consider not having agents on all your devices. This is, this could be problematic for BYOD scenarios. So there are a place to use agents, but not everywhere, and recognizing how users approach that and what's best for, for to make sure that people are uh, compliant and we have that security. The two other areas I'd suggest doing besides cl your, your cloud security with a CASB technology is upgrading your secure up gateway. And web security now, you know, it's been around since the mid 2000s, if not before, really built to secure web traffic and you know, web today is important, but your web apps really are just another set of apps among a multitude of apps you're running. And so, you know, you can do this now on your device. Now we've got a technology, for example, that allows you to do secure up gateway, you know, content filtering, uh, deep, you know, inspection of that, of that web traffic on the actual device without having to backhaul to an appliance or backhaul to a cloud-based appliance, which some of the cloud providers do that provide similar cloud proxies. Um, and it's just easier to implement, gives the user privacy and really built for the digital transformation world where, you know, secure up gateway technology can be put on a device. Our devices are powerful enough to do that today. Um, it's a lot of benefit to actually modernizing your secure up gateway and then having that policy management and that, that all that interface in the same place as your cloud services uh, makes it a lot easier to control and secure your data. Uh, and the third piece is just to make sure that you are securing your inter internal applications, data that is not yet moved to the cloud. And that's, a, that's through a zero trust architecture, a zero trust network access. And that basically replaces the need for a VPN. Uh, and if you do it right, uh, for example, we advocate agentless ZTNA. So, you know, you don't want to have agents everywhere. It's good to not use agents, especially if it's a web-based uh, internal app. Uh, you, know, you shouldn't feel rushed to move your cloud, your, your applications to the cloud either. If you've got your SAP or your Oracle, uh, that's very important and you, you know it's compli complicated. Uh, you, you can secure that with the proper ZTNA technology that also then moves in policy, moves in reporting, moves all that visibility and control into one interface with your web, with your cloud services. So bringing that together in a SASE architecture, I think is really beneficial to uh, to organizations trying to go to go faster on digital. Right, yeah. Um, and finally for you, um, so with all of the ransomware attacks in the news now, um, does this threaten digital transformation initiatives or does going digital make confidential yeah. data less secure? It's a really, really good question because these type of attacks are, are getting more complicated. And, and you know, you look at the solar winds attack that was uh, 18 months or longer before they were discovered. Don't know all the damage yet, but they were actually able to infiltrate and they're, they're showing their, their complexity that they will go to, to, to compromise an organization's data. You know, they were able to infiltrate a security organization, security company, get in and infiltrate their product management platform. And once they're in, be able to, you know, have people upload that as a patch uh, to 18,000 organizations around the world. Um, that's a huge, huge problem. But if you look back at, at what we've seen about this attack, it was compromised credentials that were the issue at the heart of it and through cloud services. And so, you know, simple things, of course, you can do like making sure your credentials are secure and then having multi-factor authentication. There are obvious steps you would take, but 
that's not really enough. I mean, I think today um, it just forces folks to, to realize that if you're going to do digital transformation, a lot of organizations do it incrementally and they just sort of, as they go and add a new app, they'll add new technology and they'll do it piece by piece. What SASE does is force you to rethink the architectural model. And if you think about it, it makes a lot of sense. If your data is in other people's data centers, you need a way to make sure that's secure. And so, you know, it requires upgrading your security from, you know, your on-premise screw-up gateways and firewalls and all that architecture you've got that, you know, you spent years building up that runs the business, but it's really built for a different data center on-premise environment. Um, and so it's just, you know, it just shows us the need to upgrade our security posture for a cloud and mobility um, to have a robust, you know, security service that can do that. So for example, you know, if you're looking for a cloud security service, people are now asking about uptime and outages, because if you've got a cloud security service that's protecting you and it goes down for an hour or half a day or whatever, that leaves you totally exposed. So having that resiliency built into your cloud service, having a really full feature set, having integrations into an ecosystem that is your other security and IT infrastructure, your your identity, for example, all your your seams, all your other parts of your security infrastructure is really important as well. So I, these attacks are, are, are really interesting. You can you can see it coming a little bit if you're in the security industry like we are, um, where you see, you know, so many organizations now moving to cloud, more people touching their data and more and more places where data can leak and be compromised. Uh, for, you know, creates a larger attack service for these these cyber criminals. And as long as people keep paying some of these ransomwares, um, <laughs> I think they'll keep going at it and they keep making uh, making more money. Right, yeah. Cool. Well, thank you very much, Jonathan. That brings us to an end uh, to today's interview. Thanks for joining me again. All right. Thanks for having me. Thanks.